In this area of YouTube, the alt-right are running the show. Now, I'm not saying the alt-right runs Google just yet. I need a couple more pins for my conspiracy wall on that one. However, the alt-right's conduct on YouTube has allowed them to take the political social commentary sphere we find ourselves in as their hostage, and make it extremely difficult for people to effectively oppose the alt-right online, especially in video format. In this video, I hope to go through several of the ways the alt-right games the system on YouTube to silence opposition. Have you ever noticed, pretty much every anti-alt-right video has mass dislikes? Now, a lot of these come from being shared on places like Poll. However, we do know that there are Discord servers that actively have people vote-botting on YouTube. Grundsätzlich wisst ihr wahrscheinlich alle inzwischen, dass wir ähm, vorhaben, ja, sowas wie Trollstürme oder wie auch immer ihr das nennen wollt, auf konstruktive Kritikstürme, pass auf, ja. Also okay, konstruktive Kritikstürme auf verschiedene Ziele ähm, durchzuführen, dass niemals irgendwelche Rückschlüsse auf diesen Server kommen. Grundsätzlich kann man dies, ähm, ihr habt jetzt vielleicht gesehen, wir sind jetzt auf dem Server so rund 1000, oh, ich muss nochmal gucken, äh, 1250, glaube ich, waren 1268 wurde mir gerade angezeigt, so viele sind wir gerade. Das klingt jetzt wenig, wenn ihr überlegt, ihr habt jetzt ein YouTube-Video mit 200.000 Aufrufen oder sowas und jetzt kommen da 1000, äh, Likes oder Dislike dazu. Das ist jetzt nicht so unbedingt so viel. Das kann man aber relativ leicht multiplizieren, indem jeder von euch sich, äh, ja, wir nennen es mal Brandkonten oder äh, Fake-Accounts oder nennt es wie ihr wollt, wer angeht es mit nicht mag, einen Brandkonten erstellt und äh, dann meinetwegen mit fünf Konten dabei geht. Dann haben wir schon die fünffache Anzahl von mir aus, könnt ihr euch auch 50 erstellen. Das muss jeder selber wissen, wie viel Zeit und Mühe er investieren möchte. Wie genau das vonstatten geht, wird euch gleich noch ein Offizier erklären. Ja. This is from the former Reconquista Germanica server. They had a strictly militaristic structure inside the server, yes, these kids were barking orders at each other, and they based it on ranks in Nazi Germany and had ranks like Paladin. Ugh, the laughing. They would use multiple accounts, up to something like a hundred each. So basically, a thousand dislikes could come from just 10 or 20 individual people. That nasty comment from an alt writer that got 300 likes? Maybe only three people actually pressed like on that. Generation Identity was heavily connected to the scheme. They were the ones who allegedly sent the handbook on how to create mass accounts, and Martin Selner was a VIP in the server. Now we know that there's likely also a lot more servers like this, since there are rumours of English speakers doing similar stuff and having been the original source of these tactics in the first place. So basically, the alt-right are exploiting YouTube to affect the analytics of videos they like and dislike, giving them an entirely artificial advantage and pushing their videos to more people and making videos against them look worse. Alt-writers also use their networks to mass flag content criticizing them. The shadow of these flags looms over all anti-alt-right content creators like a dark cloud. ContraPoint's video criticizing white nationalism was flagged down, forcing her to re-upload and remake the video. Sean's video criticizing the Great Replacement was mass flagged by Poll before being reinstated by YouTube. Kraus and T had one of his videos on race realism taken down, only to have Sargon mirror it and that mirror to also be flagged off. Three Arrows is also well known for his video criticizing the old right being flagged off of YouTube. I've also had to deal with it. Several of my videos have been flagged off, including a recent mirror of a video that will be discussed later. A video criticizing Mouthy Buddha's Jewish question series. A video on making fun of a white nationalist for not being white and a chat with another YouTuber. I was also hit with a false DMCA claim by Millennial Woes for criticizing him in a video. We'll be talking about him later. Criticizing the alt-right actually puts you more at risk for mass flagging than actually making alt-right videos. Mass flag brigades are actively trying to shut down any criticism of the alt-right. This is Colin Robertson, going by the online moniker of Millennial Woes. He makes frequent trips to Europe and the US to do talks, using his notoriety from his YouTube videos to act as an ambassador for the American alt-right in European right-wing and far-right circles. 
This is his speech in Seattle Forum's Alt-Right Transformers event in late 2016. <laughs> Here's another thing that we could that we could build. This is controversial. The ability to dox people on demand. And I, I think it, we should be able to threaten them. We should be able to say, go ahead, but here's your address, and here's your phone number, and, uh, and so on. Here's your date of birth. We should be able to do that, if we can. Have a central registry <laughs> of leftist journalists and so on, and say to them, we'll, we'll fuck you up. What Wove has suggested here is not an uncommon goal in alt-right circles. It's just rare for them to be so public about their intentions. And since late 2016, they've been building their systems to dig up information on people. Alt-right's Discord servers actively work to find people's personal information. Here's an example of Braving Ruins server trying to get the IP of a Twitter user to help find their real identity. The alt-right leak account, though, is is connected to the same account Gmail. The, if, if so, you would have to send a link to altrightleak at gmail.com. Possibly, I'm trying to find out what the IP of this email is. Trace email, uh, trace email source. Um. No. The thing is that it's using the Gmail IP. I'm trying to ping the actual IP of the owner of this email. Does any does anyone want to use their Google Drive and and basically use a Google Drive share for an image and send him that with an IP grabber link? Opponents of the alt right are being doxed constantly. It's almost a guarantee for it to happen at this point. Doxing from alt-righters is so rampant that it's not just opponents that have to deal with it. Being a member of their movement doesn't mean that they won't dig into your private information if they can get it. Mike Enoch, Ricky Vaughan, Baked Alaska, King of Pole, and countless other alt-right and adjacent figures have been doxed by their own circles, whether over paranoia over them being Jewish, claims of them planning to dox people themselves, or simply just for the lulz. Being one of them isn't even a get-out-of-jail-free card. Even their own figures are beholden to these threats. There's countless examples of the anti-social justice sphere being infiltrated and bullied into not going after the alt-right. But I'm going to focus on one example and use it as a case study. This part of the video is partially inspired by a video I mirrored a few days ago that got flagged off of my channel. And as an update on that video, after my failed appeal, I contacted Trusted Flagger, and he appealed the video too, also to no avail. So I have a strike on my channel for the next three months, so I can't live stream now. According to YouTube, criticizing harassment and bullying is somehow harassment and bullying. GG YouTube. Kraut's anti-alt-right Discord server was infiltrated originally by Jean-Francois Gariepi, a failed scientist, who wanted to first push Kraut towards race realism, but as it became more obvious he was a white nationalist, Kraut's server then kicked him. So someone sent in Argon from Reconquista Germanica, who impersonated a scientist and tried to feed the server fake info on anti-race realism stuff. That dumb Operation Mincemeat thing that was in the Kraut server for about a day until Jajone told them to stop being stupid LARPers, well, the alt-right actually did that plan. Which one were people outraged about? Which one got the YouTube attention? There was at least one other person in the server who was an alt-right infiltrator, who went by Joaquin. These people, along with Zeph and The Guardian, secretly recorded us and ended up either posting these recordings, sending them to others who did, and in one case, attempted to blackmail us. Literally for being in the server, people had been threatened with doxing, had family members contacted, and so a lot of them were scared. I'm not gonna name names, but a few anti-social justice types did condemn Kraut's server publicly, even though they told him privately that they know he did nothing wrong. And the thing is, this is why the anti-SJWs are in such a bad position to fight the alt-right at the moment. 
because the community is so full of infiltrators and crypto fascists. They make friends quickly, get info on you, try to work out your weaknesses and the best ways to fuck with you, and then use these as tools to keep people in line. If you start criticizing or disavowing certain protected figures, then you will find a slew of whisper campaigns inside the community trying to make people suspicious of you and turn friends against you. And some cryptos will play good cop while the open ones are harassing people that step out of line. A lot of these YouTubers are basically in an abusive relationship with their own community. They rely on it for social interaction, they have an income coming from it, and people have enough dirt and information on them to make life hell if they need to. So a lot of YouTubers just kiss the ring. They pay the mafia, because they're not activists or freedom fighters. They're mostly just painfully average people with opinions on the internet. They weren't cut out for this. Nobody knew how to deal with the alt-right, and even if they did, the infiltration came too quick for them to even realize it was happening. But, back to the crowd server. So this part needs a little bit of explanation. We had a system in the server where we would watch a video from an alt-writer and then have the scientists explain the flaws of what they said, and then discuss how to best explain that to someone who didn't understand science very well. These were all recorded so Kraut could go back and refer to them while doing research for his video. In one of these calls, Kraut ordered a pizza. He didn't mute himself, therefore he said his address aloud in one of these calls. Now, this recording got into the hands of one of the leakers, and when the massive server leaks posted by Braving Bruin dropped, Bruin drops all of the research calls in a mega file. So, Braving Ruin posted Kraut's docs while trying to prove he was a doxer. Now, either he didn't listen to these recordings and just posted them online without any regard for privacy or what was in them, or he knew what was in them and posted them online intentionally to dox Kraut. Neither of those looks very good. But the first really begs the question, if he didn't know what was in them, why did he post them in the first place? Now, the interesting thing is in Metica's video on Kraut, there are a few old forum posts from Kraut on an old atheist forum. Uh, back when Kraut was anonymous, and Braving was still edgy sphinx pretending to be a moderate classical liberal, a few goons of atheism is unstoppable, another YouTuber were trying to dox him. Kraut found someone posting an image of his face, and found uh, this image of his face on this old atheist forum. He traced it back here eventually. He contacted the forum owners to get it deleted. The funny thing is, Braving knew about this forum account, and since he was in the call while we were helping Kraut scrub the info. I wonder if he had anything to do with the information getting into the hands of Metica. But that's not the important bit. In one of the forum posts, along with the full info that had been released about Kraut, including his docs, was now enough to dox a family member of his. This family member has been threatened, has had phone calls, including one telling that family member that Kraut had committed suicide and they needed to pick up his dead body. This is why Kraut left YouTube. Not because he got caught doing anything wrong, but because his family was doxxed. Meanwhile, all over YouTube, he was being smeared as a doxer. But was he? Was this just some attempt to shut down a doxing server that was threatening alt-writers and other adjacent figures? In late September, after the aforementioned Mouthy Buddha video I made, Kraut contacted me after months of radio silence. Obviously, we'd had a massive falling out, but we both, after deciding to talk, temporarily buried the hatchet, since we agreed the alt-right was a bigger issue than any personal drama between us. I joined the server soon after. Most of the server was chatting about random stuff, and sometimes discussing things about the alt-right, or listening to Jajone lecture us on genetics. I sometimes chimed in to suggest moving away from race realism, which eventually Kraut agreed was the best move. He wanted to make a final race realism video in response to JF Gary Epi, but after that he was going to move towards history videos. Isn't it funny that the leaks, including his docs, 
dropped right before Kraut was going to finally put together that video script. Isn't it? So who did Kraut actually dox? There's only about three people the alt-right have accused Kraut of doxing. Coach Redpill, a man whose name was public on his Patreon, along with appearing with his full name on Russia Today, the accusations of doxing coming from Kraut handing around public accusations of fraud and blackmail towards Coach, and Aiden Paladin, who uh, recently said she'd never said Kraut doxed her. After this, they made accusations of him doxing J.F. Gary Epi, which doesn't make sense because the only thing that they could call doxing were the court documents released by Destiny's crowd weeks after the server was already leaked and Kraut was called a doxer. So what exactly did he do? According to Braving Ruin, the leaker, all of his moralizing about doxing in the server actually never happened now, and his only concern was that Kraut wanted to smear people. Yes, the original leaker is running away from doxing accusations when he realised that he might actually have to defend them. So basically, alt-writers used a false doxing server narrative to threaten and dox YouTubers who were interested in criticising the alt-right. Kraut didn't actually do anything wrong. Even so, Braving is still actively sending in spies to Kraut's private Discord server months after he left YouTube. What we're looking at is a situation on this platform where pro-white nationalist videos are mass upvoted and critics of it are mass downvoted and mass flagged, where the alt-right threatens and doxes people who stand in their way. If that doesn't work, they threaten people's families, while smearing their victims as the unethical ones. However, I don't think this will be solved by trying to ban the alt-right from YouTube. Platforms of this size are mostly moderated by algorithms, and these algorithms have already shown themselves to effectively harm anti-fascist content more than alt-right content. Not to mention, their subculture of sensitivity to censorship makes banning their videos more counterproductive than anti-fascist ones since it gives them an opportunity to signal boost them. Attempts to crack down on the alt-right will only amplify the problem. We need to build actual momentum against the alt-right. Criticize them, show them how they're wrong and unethical, how their ideas don't hold up to scrutiny, and do it on topics that they're not comfortable with. Discuss the problems with the ethnostep, expose the more extreme bigotry in their groups, make fun of their conspiracy theories and their own hypocrisy on their values, show the real-world effects of their movement's existence, and call out their horrible tactics. The only reason they can shut their critics down so easily is because there's so few of us. The more people there are, the harder it will be for them to do that. The alt-right aren't running Google, but they run YouTube like a mafia. At the moment, they run the show. Let's change that. And that's why we must save the white race. Oh god! Hello Millennial Woes, how would you like to be first? <laughs>